Keith Lee is proving time and time again that restaurants are phony. From his trips where he tried different foods in Atlanta, critiquing their poor customer service, all of it truly exposes the reality of the restaurant business and how they bend rules for influencers as well as the rich. With the job of influencing being the most sought after job in the world, a person making rounds in the world of influencer is food critic Keith Lee. With a massive growing fan base of 14.7 million on TikTok, 1.3 million followers on Instagram, Keith Lee is doing things never done before. Videos on his TikTok would showcase him eating food from multiple small businesses and after visiting, their sales would explode. One such city he's paid a visit to was Atlanta. The culinary spot where several high profile and celebrity owned restaurants are ranging from the seafood menu by Lil Baby, Noble Atlanta by Robert De Niro, Old Lady Gang by Candy Burus, and even non-celebrity owned restaurants like The Real Milk and Honey. After arriving in Atlanta, Keith Lee's first stop was a restaurant called Atlanta Breakfast Club. And by this first restaurant alone, Keith would be exposed to the reality of restaurants today. Fresh off the plane, ATL, the first place we went to is Atlanta Breakfast Club. I got it, let's try it and read them one through 10. We spent $144.60. But granted, we got food with five adults and two kids. The customer service was interesting. While the people were nice, the rules they had set were very unique to me. We initially tried to do takeout, but when we came in, they said we couldn't sit down and there was no space at the bar for us to stand. So we had to stand outside and order our food. And then we decided we just gonna dine in. But two people in our party stepped out for a second. Cause again, we fresh off the plane. So everybody was trying to get situated. The waitress, again, she was nice, but she told us she couldn't take any orders or she couldn't do anything until everybody sat out. No water, no coffee, no drink orders, no nothing. She also said they can only do one order and there's no add-ons. Like if you want to add on afterwards, it's a wrap one order for the whole table. She wouldn't even explain the menu to us. But again, she was very nice. I just understand that those are their rules. Unique to me, but it is what it is. That video received many comments where people showed their disapproval of the restaurant's practices, with one person saying those rules are wild. It sounds stressful ordering there. And another questioning why just a slice of butter was even a dollar. While Atlanta's Breakfast Club was rated a 6 out of a 10 restaurant, what I would consider a 2 out of a 10 restaurant is the real milk and honey. When they arrived at the restaurant, they attempted to call their order in, only to be told that they were closed. Waiting outside the parking lot, they noticed that their door was wide open, so how were you closed? Keith had his family go in there, and they were told, I stayed in the car and my family went in and they told them they were closed early for deep clean. Despite the restaurant saying that they were closed, that they were taking no more orders, that their kitchen was a crime scene and that someone stole their secret formula, that their pizza oven is demanding a day off, when Keith Lee went inside himself, the silly excuses went out the window. For the record, afterwards, I did walk in and they did recognize me and they attended the services, but I respectfully declined. I'm a normal person. I pay for my food like everybody else. So what happened? How come a restaurant where they had their oven on vacation was now able to serve an influencer? What is this really saying about these establishments? In another such story where the whole situation hit the fan was when Keith Lee decided to visit a restaurant called Old Lady Gang. Similar to what happened with the real milk and honey, Old Lady Gang told Keith's family who went in and they told them that they weren't taking orders on weekends. My family asked how long the wait was to be seated. They said an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah, an hour and a half. Okay. I mean, this restaurant had zero reservations, right? You know, their pots and pans were on strike. Espresso machines had run out of energy. She also said they didn't have any reservations available. So they didn't take out any number, any contact information. Nothing. But when Keith Lee's family would be told that and relay the information back to him, he'd go in, take some photos with people who recognized them, and after the owner saw all of this, the pots and pans were back from vacations, more stainless than ever, ready to cook. My family then came and relayed that message to me, and I decided to go in myself. We walked in and we were greeted by a nice young lady. 
And then I met some amazing people who were eating there and we took some pictures. God is amazing. As soon as me and my wife were done taking pictures, the lady said the table was ready. As always, I don't want any special treatment. I want to be treated like everybody else. I pay for my food like everybody else. I'm a normal person. I'm a normal customer. Things like this is exactly why I do reviews the way I do. Just because I have a certain amount of followers on social media don't make me different from nobody. My mom, my mom-in-law, my sister, they all paying customers just like me. So I want them to be treated just like me. So I asked how long the wait time has been today. She said an hour to an hour and a half. So which I then asked, how are you able to sit me in five minutes? I'll answer that. Maybe it's because they see that he has more followers than the population of Guinea. Or maybe these restaurants and establishments are valuing powerful people more than regular people who are really the reason that their business can be successful. But still, the owner had a response. So I asked how long the wait time has been today. She said an hour to an hour and a half. So which I then asked, how are you able to sit me in five minutes? This is her response. How long was that before I fired? I'm going to get to the bed. So I'm going to get down the bed. I'm going to wait. This is how cold it is. Okay. Now it's whoever from here. Again, my family just attempted to eat there less than two minutes ago. I then told her I changed my mind. We're going to go eat somewhere else. And I said, God bless you. And I walked out. This video was viewed 18 million times and people have set their peace. One person would say, not again. While another would suggest that all restaurant owners should invest in a hospitality course and incorporate that into onboarding new team members to where another would say, I've never heard a good thing about Condi's restaurant. And by this video being so viral, it would not only be shared multiple times across several news articles, even getting a spot on CNN, the owner of the restaurant would make her own TikToks in hopes that she could somehow explain how they were able to cut down the wait time that drastically. I do appreciate Keith Lee for stopping by our restaurant and trying to show us love. It is very unfortunate that we couldn't serve him and his family. We have, we would have loved to, okay? But he's right. We don't take to-go orders on the weekends. And the simple reason is because we do love and appreciate the people who come and support our restaurant. On the weekends, we get a lot of community support, people in our city that show up for us, as well as a lot of people from out of town. So with that being said, we don't want to overwhelm our kitchen by having to, you know, have such long times for the people who are actually at the restaurant. Through the whole 1 minute 18 seconds of the video she recorded, she never explained why the wait time was cut short. And people realized this. Some said, how do you go from a 1.5 hour wait time for regular customers and seated immediately for Keith the lead? Q still lost on a 1.5 to 5 minutes when Keith walked in. Totally fair, but serving KL in 5 minutes because of his status does not fly. Wish y'all continued success. While everyone is questioning why, the answer shows us a sad truth. The reason for this is a real issue in our society where the rich people are often more valued than the poor, despite all of us made in human flesh. But the question is why, right? Would it be money? Maybe fame? Perhaps more success for these restaurants? I mean, what's more to the sad truth? The sad truth. Money. It prints. You spend. I feel that it's the very reason why these restaurants would value Keith more than a regular person. Celebrities market themselves in order for us to get entertainment. Athletes, they market themselves through their games. LeBron James has shot in history. Media personalities, Kim K, for example, she does this through a variety of ways. Get your up and work. While movie stars like Will Smith markets himself through different activities. <laughs> oh, wow. We live in a society where being smart isn't cool. And you can see this by looking at the value of learning. It's fading away, right? Nobody likes to learn anymore. People, especially current children, they want fast and cheap ways to get rich and be famous, following YouTubers and wanting to buy their course at times. Instead of aiming to be inventors and thinkers, people are wanting to be influencers. Media personalities can post two pictures. Media personalities can post 20 second video of them dancing and earn millions of dollars. Some bark while some are dressed in silly costumes making noises for cash. 
What Keith Lee is facing is our society that places people above people, showing us that celebrities truly are treated as higher than the firmament, worshipped for their earthly riches and larger than life existences. I mean, let's draw back the velvet curtains and actually peel back and look at how these people live. Maybe it may show you why these people are worshipped. How the rich lives. From Beyonce being bought for several millions to perform, to how billionaires vacation, to Chris Rock's view on money, and this headline, it'll really show you how because of money, people are placed on pedestals. One such story at a club in London were two billionaires who eyed each other with a glint of competition. They began a competition of who could spend the most money right there that night at the nightclub. The challenge escalated, bottles of Dom Perignon's espresso martinis, crude champagnes were being ordered, dollar by dollar being spent, tables filled with bottles, crowds of stunning women around each table, and each move more audacious than the last. When all was said and done, the winner jumped up with his total receipts. Just barely two and a half hours of just being in the club at around 2.30 a.m., both receipts racked up. 130,000 pounds, with the winner spending 67,000, while the loser spent 64,000. Add this to the private concerts held by the rich, for the rich. After Chris Rock said, people just aren't aware of the levels of wealth disparities in their society. He's pretty much saying we aren't aware of how poor we are. Where if you look at the perks of the rich and the famous, it's making jaws drop. I mean, is it access to limited edition cars where only 500 were made and owners hand selected? Or the loads of free stuff that the rich are given in exchange for promotions? Or is it the metal black card Amex where you're only invited to use if you've made over 250000 to a million a year? Or the nosebleed section at the top of stadiums decked with leather seats, food, and widescreen TVs? Even down to the businesses that plans vacations for the wealthy. And one such company is of nota being global, a company that plans vacation for high net worth individuals ranging from 10 million to 8 billion dollars where their experiences sums up to 8 words. Billionaires don't vacation like the rest of us. In a story of one of their clients, he rang them up on a Thursday saying, oh it's really cold in Toronto, we think we want to go to Brazil on Saturday. In another story where they're planning a trip to Italy, the dude wanted to explore the food and art scene of Venice and Milan. On their first day, they're fast tracked through a airport immigration lines where a private boat whisks them to their suites at Amman Venice, an hotel worth $1,000 per night. With their second day planned to tour Venice's art scene with top curators and art historian, with their third day plan to see the glass making workshop not open to the public, where in the evening a private visit is scheduled to see St. Mark Basilica, with the fourth day of the trip to tour the Rialto market in Italy, one of the oldest markets in the world. And after that long hard day, a private chef is set to wait at the suite ready for their arrival to give a cooking lesson inside a room facing the Grand Canal. On the fifth day is a private lesson where you can drive from city to city with someone following closely behind you carrying all your luggages before stopping at a wine yard to see how sparkling wine is made to then arriving in this grand hotel where dinners are arranged by helicopters and limousine with Oprah performances to day six being filled with a boat tour of Lake Garda. Day seven is often arranged to see the beautiful views, to day eight being set to view some more art before going on a personal shopping spree then heading back home. Oh, by the way, if they were impressed by the food that they've eaten on that trip, a separate trip is booked for their home chef so you can go to Italy and bring the taste of Italy back home. In this world, for these matters, the rich are oddly favored. And what Keith Lee has faced from the restaurant has just been an example of it on such a small scale.